Hi there, this is Rick again. Um, I've had a couple of requests to do a video on public variables, mission making, and using the hide show module. So I'm going to show you how I use those um, specific tools to make a very simple mission. This is the way I do it. There are hundreds of ways of doing things, so um, don't think that this is the, the only way. Now, public variables are amazing things. Um, I've just written some very basic sort of like benefits of a public variable because um, I don't think a lot of people realize that, uh, you know, there are lots of different types of variables in programming and specifically in Armour 3, you get uh, local variables and you get global variables, then you get public variables and so on. So those are the primary ones. Local variables are restricted to the script that they're normally running in or the scope within the script. Global variables are available to all scripts and basically are available uh, on your entire computer. And then public variables in Armour 3 are variables that you can broadcast across the network using a simple statement and it basically synchronizes that variable state across all machines. It's a very kind of understated and, and, and extremely simple process, but incredibly powerful, especially when you use it in com combination with triggers and just general basic mission making within the editor, because a lot of missions are over-engineered and I don't think it's necessary. In fact, I like to keep it as simple as possible and public variables is a, a perfect way for doing that. The other part of the process is using a hide show module because obviously one of the key problems with mission making is trying to maintain a, a good frame rate and, and not overburden the server. Um, and the way you can do that is by essentially just reducing the number of simulated objects or entities at any one stage in the mission. Now obviously most missions are sort of a sequential process. You go here, you, you, you kill the bad guys, you move somewhere else, you maybe kill a high value target, you move to a different position, you maybe take out a convoy. So there's these uh, stepping stones during which time only the area of operation really needs to be active. Every other area can in theory just be deactivated. Now, there are lots of ways of handling uh, and disabling and enabling simulation on objects. But one of the simplest methods is the hide show module and that's what I'm going to concentrate on now and then combining those with uh, a public variable. A public variable, a simple example of a public variable, it doesn't require any deep scripting knowledge uh, and, and so on. You literally need to just look at this little example just to hopefully understand the process. You first obviously should have some sort of basic concept of what a variable is. In a computer, a variable could be regarded as a sort of a temporary holding, a virtual holder or a virtual box into which you can put a specific amount of information or data and then you can retrieve it again from that uh, variable. So variables have names. So for example, in this case, I have a variable called task one complete. Um, it could be anything I want. It's just a, it's a it's a bit of text that references the, this virtual box, and in this particular case, the way the Alma three uh, scripting engine understands this is it sees that as a variable, a global variable, and it sees the equal sign, and then it sees true. So basically, what that tells scripting engine to do is put the put the value true into this little uh, box called task one complete. So if I wanted to find out what was in this little box, if I just type task one complete, the return from the engine should be true. And in fact, it would be. But it would, in this instance, only be that on my machine. If I want all the machines on the network, including the servers, then I need to public variable um, task one complete. You see that it's got little inverted commas around it. So you finish the line with a semicolon just to close it off. Um, so basically you have task one complete equals true and then you type public variable which is an instruction to the machine, to your machine and to the servers to send this command uh, and to update this variable 
on all the machines on the network. So it doesn't matter. And when a new client joins the network, he will also get task one complete equals true. So everyone is always kept up to date and it is exactly at the same point or the same page, so to speak. So, um, okay, so I'm gonna make a simple mission and I'm gonna show you the show hide module and then how to use a public variable to essentially trigger the next logical mission. So we're gonna have three missions. We're gonna have a, a mission on this little town. We're gonna have a mission on this little town and another mission over there. Very simple. So what I've done is I've gone and already created some uh, little vehicles. I've created some terrorists. Um, and I'm using on the driver a very useful little function from Bohemia called BizFunk Patrol, Task Patrol. You literally can dump this on the driver of a vehicle or you could put it on the, the leader, the team leader of a group of enemies or friendlies. And all you need to do is just change that number. So this is the distance from one waypoint to the next, uh, max distance. So when this function runs, it will create waypoints uh, using that, that distance from the current position uh, on average. It doesn't have to be that exact position, but I think that's the max distance. Um, you can just literally copy this and dump it in uh, onto, for example, I have a group of guys over here and they're going to patrol within 100 meters of this original position. Uh, same thing with that guy. Uh, same thing with that guy. So, so within a few seconds, I've dropped down uh, 12 plus two vehicles, 12 units. Uh, these four units are grouped to this guy and he's got a patrol script. So these guys are all gonna go out and patrol and do their thing. Now the problem is that when you make a mission, you could have maybe, I mean, I like making really big missions. So, you know, like in this town, you could potentially put 30 or 40 enemy quite easily. And then maybe another one over here, you could have 10 over there and 20 there and so on. Before you know it, you're running into literally five, four or 500 uh, enemy units in a, in a mission. Now, if you keep them all active at the same time, which you would do by default, um, uh, the simulation will be active. That's a hell of a lot of work the, pro the process is doing on the server, uh, or the server's doing, and for absolutely no benefit whatsoever to anyone on the, that's playing the game, because the majority of those units are way outside the area of focus. So you question whether while I'm, uh, while I'm attacking this base, what is the point of these guys being active, or those guys, or any of the other positions? So clearly, you really would like to switch off all these other guys. And when I say switch off, I mean switch the simulation off. So in other words, the engine will just ignore them. They're just like dummies. They're like a tree. They, they don't take very much processing at all, if any. So um, then once this mission, uh, let's say this little submission will be complete, it would then say, okay, now it's your turn to become in enabled and it would enable simulation on this area and once this area is complete, it would then enable simulation on this area. So it's then very much more efficient because the servers actually only have only having to concentrate on this small group of, of enemy, um, which means that they become the AI become more responsive and intelligent. And you often hear people saying, oh, the AI, you know, they're so dumb. And uh, actually, they're not as dumb as, my, as, as you kind of think, because if you give them sufficient time slices on the server, they actually can be pretty, pretty intelligent. And you, you occasionally see the AI do something and you think, oh, that's, I've never seen that before. And uh, occasionally you'll see an AI just standing doing absolutely zip and he, you're firing at him and he just ignores you and you think, okay, I've seen that before. But the problem with that is normally because the AI just simply are not getting enough processing and obviously it could also be a bug but um, so so basically the objective of this is to show you how to sequentially create uh, tasks I mean these tasks are very simple go here kill those guys go here kill those guys you could change this mission around and this is the benefit of this particular method I'm going to show you 
you could have uh, go here, kill these guys. Oh, and while you're here, by the way, you need to kill a high value target, or maybe that's the primary job. Go here, kill the primary uh, high value target, and and when you're there, remove all the extra hostiles. Right, the next mission could be go here, rescue someone, and kill all the hostiles, or sneak in, rescue them, get out. In other words, it's completely open to your particular needs. Now, if you use sector modules, which are in the module section, if you use sector modules, sector modules have certain limitations in terms of what you can do, uh, what type of mission you can create with them. Uh, so I'm going to start off quickly. Uh, now we're going to go to the base. I'm going to create some, some, some friendly soldiers. So I'll get a group drop down a squad okay so there's nine nine guys I'm going to get rid of the anti-tank guy I'm going to make these guys playable okay they're all playable and there's my guy okay so now we need to create the first enemy position so here is a little area but first we need to hide everything. So let's go get the hide module. Okay, so we're gonna have a show hide module and we're gonna have, we're gonna make this, let's hide. And we're gonna go objects and synchronize trigger. All right. So let's go get a trigger. And we'll make this uh, 100. And we'll activate it with op4 present. All right. We'll synchronize to the module. So currently what we have is a trigger that's, that's looking for op4 present. So this trigger will return true because it's, it's actually finding enemy in that area. This, trigger, this module is looking for objects in a synchronized trigger, and it sees that. This is great. So now we just need to make sure that this module fires under all conditions. And so what we'll do is we'll just drop down the trigger, synchronize it, and change this to true. So this trigger will fire instantly. There's no time delay. So as soon as this trigger becomes active, it will fire. Now you need to remember that all triggers, this everything you're seeing in the editor, is going to be copied and saved when when the mission is made as a multiplayer mission every single trigger will be replicated across um it will be saved into the mission file and in the mission file when you join the server will be downloaded to your machine so every client that joins the joins the network will get a copy of all of these objects including all the triggers so that's like really cool because you don't have to really worry about you know is this trigger local to my machine or does it exist across the network or you know uh, all of these sort of issues all these objects that are placed in the editor are going to be visible to everyone in the in a multiplayer game okay so we need to now not only just hide this group we need to hide these two other groups as well so i'm just going to copy this trigger and plunk him down over here I'm also going to sync him to the same hide module. I'm going to go over here. This one's a little bit too small, so make it 150. Oops. Okay, off for presence, nothing special about that. Connect, Let's synchronize it to the show hide module. Okay, so what do we got? We've got three triggers that are looking for op4 present. And the reason it's doing that is because we could have a base over here with independents or civilians and so on. Now, if you want those civilians and the independents to be hidden, well, then the trigger would need to be independent present or civilian present. And if you sync those triggers to this hide module, it will interpret that and say, OK, I'm going to hide all of them. So you could have civilians in this area as well as up for, but that means you'd need to make another trigger change this to civilian for example you then synchronize this to the hide module and then plunk that back on top now if there were civilians in this area they would also be hidden when this module starts and this module will, will trigger 
or start up when this trigger fires. So this trigger will fire, it will, it will immediately tell this module to do what it needs to do. And this module will say, okay, I'm, I'm looking for objects in synchronized triggers and I'm gonna hide them. So it looks to all of these synchronized triggers. The triggers returning groups of civilians and op4. And it says, okay, fine. I'm gonna put that into an array and I'm gonna hide them. And that's what it does. So right now, if I was to start this mission and go here, there would be nothing there. You might hear some noises of vehicles, but the noises are independent of the simulation. The, the actual objects are not simulated. So, uh, well, the noises are part of the simulation. It's just that they initialize so quickly that the sound is still playing when the object's uh, simulation is disabled. So, um, and now you notice that I can't remember where this particular base was. So that's kind of a problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to put down a little marker. So we'll put down a marker. We'll make it 100. And we'll leave it solid and we'll make it up four. Okay. So we're going to call this area one. So this trigger, I mean, sorry, this this little uh, marker is called area one. It's actually not quite big enough, but for the sake of this example, I'll just move the guys over and move that slightly. That'll do the job. All right. So what we have is nothing more than just a plain marker called, and we need to give it an, a name. So we'll call it area one. Okay. And we're going to make the next area called area two, strangely enough. Area two. Okay. We'll go up to this guy. And we'll drop down this. Make it 150. We'll make this area three. And we'll put it down a little bit more close to the center. Okay, so we've now got three areas that are all currently marked on the map, but there's no one in them. So that's kind of a, well, let's go and have a look and see if there's anyone in them. Okay, so there's the three positions. So I'm going to drop down my alt, alt clicking. Just want to quickly uh, make sure I'm in God mode. What's your position? Okay, see so it took quite a while for them to actually be disabled, but eventually they just disappeared. But you can see they went on a patrol. So you have to bear that in mind that when you, when in the beginning of a mission, when you hired objects, it particularly took a long time. I'm not quite sure why, because it's a relatively small number of units in the mission at the present moment. But it took, uh, in that particular case, it took like 15 seconds or something before it actually disabled the simulation on these objects. Um, it's possible that it was looking for civilians and couldn't find any, and maybe that caused the problem. I doubt it. It shouldn't do that. Normally, it takes probably five to ten seconds on big missions. Um, and it's also possible that, you know, these areas are a little bit small because the some of the AI are pretty close to the edge. And, you know, given that it's going to take up to maybe like a ten seconds, let's assume this guy's walking in the opposite direction. The distance from there to there is about 40 meters. 10 seconds he could potentially get outside this area before it actually triggers the hide so probably should increase the size but for the sake of this demo I'll just leave it as is okay so we know that this trigger is firing and we know that it's hiding all objects in a synchronized trigger okay now I'm not going to worry about the fact that there's three red markers here because uh, I'm going to show you how to hide those just now but for the sake of uh, the initial part, I'm going to just activate these modules. Um, so I'm going to just go and find the same module, hide module. I could just copy and paste probably, but okay. So I'm going to now unhide this one. So 
I'm going to go back to this objects and synchronize trigger show units. So it's great. So it's the same same module. We synchronize it to the trigger. Okay. And now we need something to tell to trigger this module into action. So let's say we're going to use a trigger. And I'm going to put it vertically so I can see that this is like a little switch. And the condition of this is task one start. That's it. Okay, maybe we give it a five second delay. Okay, so you think, well, what on earth is task one start? Task one start is a variable which is currently undefined. Uh, so it's definitely not going to fire this trigger because this is meaningless. And as far as the condition is concerned, the only way this trigger will fire is if this condition returns true. However, if I can set this variable to true, if I can put true into this variable, then this condition will be true. And after five seconds, this trigger will fire, enables the, the show function on this module, and then everything within the synchronized trigger, which has got op4 in it, will suddenly become active. So obviously you would normally do this just before you, let's say we, uh, we trigger the, the first mission over here. Maybe there's a computer on a table. In fact, we will have a computer on the table just now. And I'll show you how you can actually sequentially, when you start up the mission, you could say, okay, let's start, because last week we finished uh, episode three, so we can then start from episode four and you could then trigger the next episode in the sequential process. But in this particular case, um, we're just going to show, I'm just going to show you how to quickly trigger this particular um, area into action. So the, that's a variable and we're going to send, we're going to use this as a public variable now. So let's go back to our little base. And let's go and put a computer down on the table. Actually, let's put a table down first. Okay, we'll plunk down a... We'll put down a camping table. And then we'll search for a, a laptop. Okay. Standard laptop. We'll dump laptop down. Okay. And then what we need to do is we need to add an action. So I've previously written this add action over here. Um, but I'm actually going to just take a very simple. I'm just going to take a few lines out of this. And I'm going to put these two add actions. Select, select the campaign start point. Okay. This is good. We better give the laptop a name since the script actually refers specifically to laptop. So we'll call this laptop. And we're going to say, and we're going to change this from pushback in, in Pushton. We'll just call it task one. Okay, it's very descriptive. And instead of having a script running, we will simply type in that little, I think it was task one start. So task one start equals true. Okay. Public variable. Ta whoops. Task one start. Very important you don't make a spelling mistake because variables are quite sensitive to that. You have to be very accurate. So you got task one start equals true, public variable task one start. So when I run this add action, it's going to send task one start equals true, and the public variable command is going to send this state of task one start. It's going to send that information out to all the computers on the network. That means everyone's going to be synchronized at the same time and everyone's going to get the same same mission start which is great 
Um, okay. So there's a little laptop. And let's just make sure that it was task one start because I always use task one done and task one whatever. So task one start, yes. All right. So now, how are we going to know that these guys have suddenly become active other than teleporting there and having a look? I suppose I could like suddenly unhide or I could hide this this um, area one. So in your mission.sqf file, you could have um, you could have this target, this particular marker. You could set the alpha set marker alpha to zero so this 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 marker would be in invisible but for the sake of this we'll just leave it and i'll teleport in just to see that they do they do become active all right so we've got a table over there first let's go and see that these guys i'm just going to make myself put myself into god mode so that I can't get killed in just in case the, there are a few over eager enemy let's jump over here and just see if I can see anyone uh, it's all quiet on the western front yeah So you can see they 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 normally get hidden within a literally a, a second or two of the mission start. So that delay I had earlier was I think there was something going on on my machine. I'm not sure. Anyway, so there we go. So these guys, there's no one here, and this mission would be a bit boring actually to at this point because there's nothing to shoot. So we'll go back to uh, to the base and we'll trigger it, and then we'll see if this little public variable actually starts. Uh, unhides and enables the simulation. This laptop seems to be quite heavy. It's slipped through the table. So we're going to go to task one. You see that option? Okay, so we're going to task one. We'll now nip down here. And here are the enemy right next to us. nip over the wall to get out of the way of them. Okay. Yeah, so it's pretty unpleasant. So we'll go back to this section. So now that's kind of nice. We were able to trigger the simulation on this area um, from a laptop. Um, but we need to actually have some something a little bit better than that because at the moment it's kind of like hmm, I don't know what the task is. There's no description So then let's go to the modules and This is a bit of a bug in Eden sometimes you do what a do a search and then it doesn't uh, refresh afterwards anyway, so we're going to uh, create a task so we'll stick a task over at the top. Okay, we're going to call this task one. And uh, for want of a better description, task one, title, um, clear the oil station from of all enemies of all Insurgents. Okay, so that's the objective. That's the objective, and it's going to be assigned because it's the first one. And the task type is going to be an attack. So we uh, that's the little icon you're going to see. Okay, and we must. This is important. We're going to make this uh, all playable units, so we don't have to synchronize this module to anyone. It's just there. Okay. But what we do need to do is we don't really want this task to be visible before anything else. We want it to actually synchronize so that when task one start is true, it synchronizes the, the task. So we'll put a little task there. 
but then we need a task state so we need to know and this is going to be when it's completed so we need to synchronize that to the task let's move it a little bit over so you can actually see the synchronization and then what we need is we need a trigger so <coughs> I'm not sure. Is it 150? 100. Um, okay, so now we know this is going to be op for present. Now you can either have it op for not present, or we can say op for present. But there's nothing worse, as far as I'm concerned, than when you kind of searching for the last guy in an area. So I normally do the following I say op for present. And um, alive x count count this list less than three. Look, it's a small area, so um, I don't actually need this. I just need uh, actually yes, I do. Okay, so this and so up for present and. It's going to say how many are alive in this list. This list refers to the array of objects that are found with this trigger. So this trigger is searching for up for present within 100, meet, 100 radius. And then it's going to say if this condition is true, then this trigger will fire. So the condition is that there are less than three people in this trigger radius, trigger area. And if there are less than three, then what is it going to do? It's going to fire, and it's going to fire the completed function. So that's terrific. So now we have a we have a a trigger that's going to fire when we set the ra the um, the public when we set the public variable to true. So when this is true, after five seconds, it's going to unhide all the objects. It's going to fire this create task. It's going to create a task in the uh, map task section. It's going to say clear the oil station of all insurgents. It's going to show that it's an assigned task and it's going to show a little attack icon just above this red area. All right. So that's cool. So now what we need to do is we need to, let's say we hide this little, this red marker. So this is, we said this is area one. Yeah. Okay. So what we need to do is go and find our mission. So I'm just calling my mission public variables. So I'll just make a new file called init.sqf. Get rid of the text extension. Yes. So now if I go into that, and I'm saying, and the marker is called area one set marker alpha zero because we want it to be hidden so while we while we add it let's hide the other two areas as well because then they won't look weird you'll have these little red markers on the map and people know where the enemy is going to be but when they go there there's no enemies so they'll think like there's something really weird going on so we switched off we've hit we haven't disabled these markers we've just made them transparent so they're not visible okay set marker alpha so um, I'm just going to copy this one because we need to go back to the mission. Whoops, let's just move that back there. So now what we need to do is ensure that because now this, when we start the mission, all of these red circles will disappear. Because they're in the init.sqf file, it's telling these little markers that they should be transparent. So, but I need to make this guy red when this task starts so when this is true I can put a little thing in here and say area one set marker alpha one which is cool so now this guy will when when we start the mission all of the areas will be hidden but they'll only so if I look now I see there are no red markers so that's cool but if I go up to the little table, assuming the laptop hasn't fallen through the floor. Okay, let's 
task one. So if I set task one, we wait after five seconds, task one comes up, and there's our little red circle. It's very tiny. You can barely see it. It's being covered by the task marker. And if we click on tasks, it says clear the oil station of all insurgents. Excellent. So that's nice. So now what we need to do is what happens at the end of this little area once we've done what we need to do. Kill the insurgents, capture the guy, kill the HVT, blah, 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 whatever we have to do in this area. What we need to do is either we need to change this marker from red to blue or we need to hide it again. So I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll just hide it. Okay, so this trigger here was the one that's going to do that. So we'll just say, everyone set marker one, set marker alpha. Okay, so when when we've now that this area is clear, there are no enemies, so the red marker will be transparent, and will disappear. All right, so that's one objective done. So now we need to do the next one, and basically this is where public variables also really useful so we need to get another hide module we'll sync it to this trigger set this to show objects and synchronize trigger I'm just going to crook now and just copy that and I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it over here. Same process. Move this guy over here. Synchronize it to this. So this is going to be task two start. And we're going to call it area two. And this is going to be task two. Task two clear the, I don't know, whatever, town of all insurgents. Same process. All right. So now we need to make sure that this is area two. Is that area two? Yes, it is. And this little trigger over here is alpha present. Area two, marker alpha. Maybe make, mix. Okay, there we go. So that's all done. And then so it's toss to start, area two, blah blah blah. Okay, so we've now got two areas done. We're now gonna do another area. This is area three. Just plunk that down over there. Grab this, move it over here. Area three, task three, clear the town of all insurgents. Same process, right? Grab this. Task one, task three, start. Area three. Okay. We need to synchronize. Oh, we need a hide module, which I forgot. So we'll drop our hide module down here. Show it, sorry. Okay, that's the hide module over there. I think I'm gonna move him over kind of over here so I can don't get them mixed up all right so this is great so now what we've got is we've got playable units task three so when task three area is clear or less than three then this is going to complete and area three will be cleared so now <coughs> How do we know when the mission is finished? Well, we know that we're moving from this position to this position to this position, and this is called task three. 
So why don't we, when, when this condition completes over here, when this trigger fires, it's going to set the task state to completed, and it's going to complete this task, and then theoretically we need the mission to end at that point. Okay. So one way of doing that would be to say, let's use another, let's say mission ended or mission complete. Mission complete equals true. Now we need to make sure everyone knows about it. So that's public variable mission complete equals two. The mission complete, I should say. Mission complete. Very important you remember to put inverted commas around the variable when you public variable it. Otherwise you're gonna nothing's gonna happen. So mission complete equals true. Okay, so now we know that at the end of mission three. Once the mission has been completed, and all the other missions have been completed pre prior to this, um, it's going to be great because now I've got a I've got a variable that's going to return true after this condition is is completed. So once we've killed all the guys here, well they're three they're less than three, then this variable called mission complete is going to be uh, rendered. And so now we need to end the mission. So let's call an, let's put a little trigger down. And we'll go for end one. Now the condition for this trigger to fire needs to be uh, not true. <laughs> it needs to be. Uh, just make sure I got this right. Mission complete. Oops. Okay. Mission complete. And we don't want it to happen straight away because maybe. People want to just rest a bit, or you want to look at scores, or whatever. And then this, we can switch on debriefing uh, as well if we wanted to, so they could see the scores, cards, and so on. So now what will happen is, when you kill everyone here, well, let's say you're down to the last three, less than three units, then this trigger will return. This condition will return true. This will fire. It will hide the red marker. It will then uh, called area three. It will then set a, a, a global variable mission complete, and it will public variable that across the network to the servers to every single person who's currently joined to the game, and tell all the machines that the, that basically this variable is true. Now, considering that all these triggers exist on all the clients around the network, when that goes, when that becomes true it's going to activate the N1 condition. In other words, it's going to end the game. Okay, so shall we see how that works? I'm going to kind of Rambo this. I'm going to be in God mode so I can just basically force the process. All right. So now remember, at the present moment, all of the objects in these three areas, simulations off, the process is not having to do much on the server. So the mission frame rate you know, is, is nice and high, and there's no load on the server. And if I switch on, um, if I switch on task one, after five seconds, it'll come up, and it'll, it'll enable just the simulation on these little objects over here. Okay, so that's great. So now if I pop into this area, there's some enemy, and I need to be able to kill trucks. So I'm going to go uh, cursor, target, sit, damage, one. Okay, so that's kind of like, I'm like, I just have to point, point at an object and destroy it. Oops, there we go. Zero, seven, three, two, one, niner. All right. So those guys are all dead. Let's just see if I can find some more. Let's go around here. Oh, there's Spillian. some guys. Two, 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 two. 
So uh, obviously one of the dangers, okay, there we go. So task one has been complete. The area is Sometimes the markers are not accurate. So you see three, but maybe the, that's last known position. All right, so what we didn't do is set up the next logical con trigger condition. In other words, let me just see here. So what was completed over here, I didn't specify how we're gonna get the next area to trigger. So the simplest method would be to use the same process that we used on the last one. And that is where we, we create a public variable on the completion of, the, of that area. So here, we, here we've got this little self-contained entity. Okay, don't worry about this line going off there. That's going to the hide module. I'll just move it kind of out the way. Um, so what we need to do now is once we've completed this area, we want this area to trigger, okay? And we know that we can trigger it with task to start. So I could go back to the laptop and, and, and maybe run another action which says task two, or I could have it automatically trigger when this area finishes. So you can decide what you want to do. If you wanted to, to, to do the laptop route, you could then just go back to the laptop Let's grab this table and move it because it's irritating me. And hopefully this laptop, this is on a nice flat piece of ground. Okay. So we've got laptop, add action, task one, start equals true. So I could add another function, another little, a simple little line in here saying laptop, add action, task two. You could give it a, a nice descriptive name depending on what the mission is. Task two start, task two start. We can do a third one, uh, task three, whoops, task three, task three start, task three start. So now we've got three tasks on the laptop and as soon as task one is complete, I can go to task two and so on. Or the way it's set up right now, I could actually trigger the second mission first. Well, the third mission, obviously you've got to be careful because if I trigger the third mission first, then it's going to, once it completes, it's going to end the game. So you might decide that you want to do it in a different way. So in this particular case, that's the one method is to go back to the base and start the second task. Wait for another task to come in. You could have a radio message that comes in that sets the variable. Because all you need to do to get this to work now is use task to start equals true public variable task to start and that's it two lines and you basically start off on a completely new mission this mission could be as complex as you want you could create subtasks like for example the task id is task two but you could have a subtask over here for example if i go to uh where is it intel create well actually i'll just copy it okay so I could copy this, and then I could say, um, I'm gonna take that out and put it there, because actually this is task 2A, and this is, I don't know, whatever, kill the HVT, the HVTY, kill the HVT. And uh, you don't want this to be assigned. You have to decide which which state should be assigned to start off with, especially if you're going to have. Uh, so we want to kill. So we're looking for a. There's a kill. Okay. We could sync this to that. We have two tasks. Okay. So the reason that I've done this parent task. This is going to show as a subset of task two. So that's, this is gonna be like a child entity relative to the task ID, task two. This is task two, and the parent, that's the parent, and this is the parent. This is kind of like the child, task two is the parent. So when task two A comes up, I don't have to put a task ID on here because it's gonna be, it knows it's a subset of the parent, which is task two. 
I'll just leave it there. You can see it just now. Um, so, so that's the one way of doing it with the, with the laptop. The other way would be to just set this variable true uh, task to start when uh, I've completed task one. So it becomes just a sequential process. So let's just go and get, just because it's easier to, than typing, I'll just copy that little sucker out of there and go back here. And now at the end, when this triggers, it's going to be less than three units alive in this area. So public variable task to start. Okay, so we know we've just completed this task. This trigger is just fired. And when this trigger fired, it's hidden, it hid the, uh, the, um, the marker. It then said task to start uh, to, to true. So if that's true, then this guy here should fire automatically. Yes, it will, because it's waiting for task to start to be true. Okay. Likewise, when this guy fires, when task two area is complete, it can then fire task restart. Okay. Now it's really cool. So now we've got two ways of starting this mission. Well, we actually got one now because these are going to automatically trigger. As soon as this mission is, this, this particular task is complete, when the condition of less than three units are alive in this area, it will set the, the variable task to start to true. When that's true, it'll unhide these objects and create the task. When there are less than three people in this area, it will do exactly the same thing. Uh, it'll say task three start equals true, hide this area, and this area will become active. When these guys are all clear, yeah, this works fine. It's gonna it's gonna hide the area. It's gonna complete the uh, it's gonna complete the task, and then we needed a little delay so that we can see the task completed. After five seconds, this task will complete and the mission will end. Well, actually, before five seconds, this task will complete, and then five seconds later, the mission will end. So now let's go and see how it works. So the table seems to have a laptop on it, which is great. Excellent. So there's task one, two, and three. I think we're going to go to task one and wait for the task to propagate. Here comes task one. Nip out. Make, make myself, put myself into God mode. Better not point at anything here because it's going to be destroyed. Okay, there we go. So now go back down here, find the area, drop in over here. Okay, let's just find some enemy to shoot. There's some guys. Cavalry. So please stop shooting me. Okay, so now toss two started. Just quickly clean up over here. Okay, so that's completed. Area is clear. 
this new area has started. And you can see there's a subset task currently. Um, the only reason I think Stop that. The only reason I put um, these guys, the, the actual objectives, quite high up is that because this is such a small area, these icons Technical are so big. Zero, seven, seven, two, two, one. Because of these patrol radiuses will set a little bit high. Really bad shooting. Okay, let's get rid of that. Let's see if I can find find some more people. Here comes a guy. Basically, that's not it. Let's see if I can find some more. Eight, two, two, three. So task two is complete. I mean, what I could do, what I could do is um, have a condition on the secondary task. So that they both have to be completed before you move on to the next one. So let's have a look and see if we can find some enemies. So, let's go find some, find some enemies. Come on, man, where are you? Technical, uh -huh. zero, eight, six, two, four, four. So we just completed it and there comes the mission end so that's the basic process if you found this of use uh, please like and subscribe particularly click on the subscribe public variable up above because that would be really cool thank you